Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to 16 Minutes, a weekly show here at CNT where we will cover a range of topics, including politics, lifestyle, pop culture, business, health, and science. I'm your host, Nigel Worcestershire, and this week we'll head to the Galileo Observatory for a chat with Senior State Prosecutor Nigel Barrington. Tonight we'll have a bit of a Nigel on Nigel, as this is 16 Minutes. Standing here to my left is DOJ member Nigel Barrington this evening. And how are you, Mr. Nigel? Uh, I'm pretty good. How are you? Absolutely fantastic, mate. Coming off of a special election political season. Always exciting here for CNT. All right? Absolutely. So, Mr. Barrington, having you on our show tonight, you know, you've, you've run the gamut of multiple positions in public office here in the state of San Andreas. So, what, what do you tell our viewers at home a little bit about who Nigel Barrington is and how you got to where you are today, mate? Why don't you take us on the journey of your life and how we got to today? And we'll unpack some of those things along the way, all right? Of course, of course. Um, yeah, so I didn't start off uh, as a prosecutor. Um, I started out um, my lawyer career as a private defense attorney. I started my own firm. It was called Barrington Associates. We had about seven uh, lawyers, <clears throat> excuse me, um, with two paralegals. And we took various cases throughout the state at the time. Um, we were in business for quite a while, and, and that's kind of what gauged my interest. I, I put my foot in the door. Uh, I started out uh, solo um, and kind of continued my growth upwards. And as I grew, um, I brought on uh, additional additional lawyers into my firm. Um, took a little bit of a break, of course. Um, and and when I moved here, you know, I looked around. Got a bit of work fatigue. Is that where that break was from? Yeah. Overwork, right? But the nine to five grind it to you, mate. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a, it's always something. You know, you, it's never a nine to five. It's always, you know, you're you're on call twenty four seven, and, right. and and it gets to you. Absolutely. So after a bit of personal sabbatical, if you will, right, you've had a bit of a regroup. You find yourself refreshed now, do you? I do. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. I'm sorry to interrupt your train of thought there, mate. Go ahead. Continue. No, of course. Um, so I moved here to the state um, and I, I kind of did some digging around and, and, and realized that the Department of Justice was lacking some prosecutors and something I've never done before, but something I've always wanted to try. Um, so I reached out to Cyrus Hunt, who is no longer with the Department of Justice, and, and kind of got that, that started. Um, I had a meeting with Cole Gordon, uh, rest in peace, of course. Um, and and, and the rest is really history. You know, I've, I joined the DOJ here, and now uh, I'm a senior state prosecutor. A senior state prosecutor. And how's that treating you, mate? How you like the job? Uh, I think it's, a, it's, it's, it's different, different from what I'm used to. Um, you know, like I said, I've always been in, in, in legal terms, I've always been a defense attorney. So, um, now you're on the other side of the table, right? It is. Yeah. Some of these people you were rep represented previously, you know, now you're on the other side, I'm trying to yeah. send them away, so to speak, right? Um, what side of the table do you like better, if I could ask? I'd probably say a defense attorney. Um, while I enjoy being a state prosecutor and I plan on staying here for quite a while, um, there is something, it, it's a different aspect, you know, the, you know, from being a defense attorney where, you know, everyone was willing to talk to you and hang out with you and, and whatnot to becoming a state prosecutor to where you always have to watch your back. Um, be careful. You're a bit the enemy to the common exactly. man. Exactly. Right? Yep. Exactly. Um, it, so uh, uh, how does one deal with that at the end of the day? Um, yeah, is it, does it weigh heavy on, on, on the psyche of, of an attorney? You know the, the 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 public opinion so to speak i wouldn't say the opinion of the public um really matters to, to to lawyers um at the end of the day we're all here to just do our job right um however the threats are are what are the most concerning the most concerning things um in, you know things to combat that has been taught been you know in talks with security right. um and and with the department of justice to see how we can what we can do to secure you know, myself and other members of the Department of Justice. In, in some of these high profile cases, I would imagine it's, a, it's almost borderline threat to your life, I would imagine, correct? Uh, yes, 100%. Unbelievable. 
line of work. I'm almost like a bit of a journalist, you know, just trying to get the story to the people, and they've got to be worried about putting in harm's way. Well, we, we do, you know, in all good societies, need law and order. All right, so we do appreciate your service there, all right? Of course. So we know you have held a couple of other public positions in office. Why don't, why don't we speak a bit, a little bit about being a police officer, mate? What was that like? Take us through academy and get the jobs and, 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 and any climbs through the ranks you might have went through. Let's unpack that journey a little bit for the people at home. Of course, yeah. So I was a standard police officer. I went through the academy. Um, it was a six-week academy. Um, just went through it like any normal person. Um, and after the six weeks, I was like a, I was a standard police officer. Um, I was with the department for about two or three years, just about three, just, yeah, just about three years. Um, and by the end of it, I, I made it all the way up to, um, police commissioner. Um, and, and, and that was as high as I went and it's as high as you really could go. Absolutely. And how did you enjoy your time as a police officer? What brought that time to an end, if you don't mind? So it's a very touchy subject, but I'll get into it. Um, so uh, I there was a hostage situation um, at, a, at a place they called Yellow Jack up in Sandy Shores. Um, and I was called down there. Um, I was just about to clock off shift. I get there um, and it's just, you know, another hostage situation. Or at least that's what I thought. Um, I arrive on, t on, on scene and, and the SWAT commander comes up to me and informs me that it was my wife inside. Um, so, you know, obviously I get a little oh, emotional. Oh boy, um, right. It's hard to be that close. Do you think as, as you know, uh, an acting police officer, you should have possibly removed yourself from, from possibly that case to not sort of deal with the emotional turmoil that would be involved in that and, and being able to think straight? It, so am I, I jumping too far ahead? I apologize. No, no. So, so I, I contemplated removing myself. I stood back a little bit until I found out that she was the aggressor in the situation. Boy, oh, not everything you would want to hear. Correct. So I, I began conversations with her um, to try and calm her down and to figure out what was going on. Um, I ended up calming her down. Um, was able to enter the building, at which point she struck me over the head. Um, and I was knocked out. Um, so when I came to, um, she had bound me to a chair and we were talking back and forth and she ended up stabbing me in the leg and seconds later the SWAT team, um, breached the building, um, and took it under control. Um, and from that point oh, forward, yeah. you know, after that incident is, is what caused me to retire. Absolutely unbelievable journey through the police ranks there. And, and so after that, was that when you started your run for, for political office? Yes. Yep. Um, so I, once again, I took a little break. Obviously, I wanted to reflect upon, you know, my career. You know, three... Right. Have a bit of a recharge, a bit exactly. of a refresh. Run that unemployment insurance down a bit, right, mate? Exactly. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. So I did that. And then um, I threw my name in the candidate bookings for, for mayoral. Uh, for a mayoral position. Um, it was myself against another member. His name was Eddie Fast. Um, Eddie Fast had been there in the city and he had been well known. He, at the time, was running public works in that city. Um, he was very, very well liked throughout the city. Um, we had several debates um, and it went straight into election. And you know, I, I, me being fairly new to that city at the time, I didn't think I really had a chance, but I wanted a change of pace. I wanted to give back to the community and see what I could do to help people. Um, so I threw it in and um, I won the election. I was the city's first mayor. Absolutely fantastic. Are there any key pieces of legislation that you lean on that you're most proud of, mate? So there was nothing that formerly that, that I guess I, I would have said I passed through. Um, however, there was no government grounds or anything. There was no legislature. There was nothing. So I kind of started the basic framework for um, for my uh, future candidates after me to continue and take off. So you know, I, I built up our our penal codes. I let um, you know I led several police ref reforms. Excuse me, um, and, and began by the end of my career, my, my term, um, working on the judicial system reform. Absolutely, absolutely. Did you find great success in that at the end of your term? I think so. Yeah, I, I definitely think that there was definitely, um, you know, a change of pace. Um, it, it went from, you know, uh, obviously I was no longer in office, but I still spoke to people that were in political party. 
um, political fields. And, and, you know, we talked regularly and, and the amount of police complaints and, and complaints about the judicial system definitely declined. Absolutely. And what would you say was one of your best successes as a, a mayor? Um, with your mayoral campaign as well, we could include. I would say probably when I was mayor, the best the best thing I did there was was police reform. Um, you know, there there was a an immense lack of respect for the use of force continuum, um, and, and it was every other day there was another complaint against police officers using excessive force. Um, yeah, through retraining policies, procedures, SOPs, and guidelines that were instrued by myself and the police commissioner at the time, um, it definitely fixed that. In, as as a previous, you know, member of public office, and as a member of the DOJ currently in San Andreas, what do you think that our current government could do differently to serve the people better? You know, I'm not entirely sure after leaving political office, it's something I've kind of strayed away from. Um, so as far as our current political system, it's not something I'm entirely sure I could could answer in terms of, um, you know, what I think they could do better from the minimal interaction I've had with both the governor and state representatives. I think they've been lovely and I think they're doing great things. Absolutely. So you would say you're overall pleased with Governor Vlad Todd currently? Yes. Yep. Absolutely, absolutely. So after mayor, we're leading up into now your, your your time in the DOJ. Is that correct? After a mayor, I then became a defense attorney. Um, now a defense attorney, right? Correct. The other side of the table. Yep. Absolutely. All right. So 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 take us through that a little bit. How would you come on from mayor to the DOJ? All right. Uh, and after that, we'll unpack some more there. Of course. Um, yeah. So I left. Um, being a mayor, um, I became very good friends in my time as the mayor um, with the chief justice and other lawyers, and it construed a you know some type form of interest in me. Obviously, being an ex-police officer, I knew a little bit about the law and the legal system and stuff, so I had that back burner. So I attended um to I attended law school, um, and that's kind of where I got my footing. As soon as that happened, um, you know, I started out just basically just going in the cells and blind building up rapport and clientele. Um, doing pro bono cases left and right just to kind of get my name out there. Absolutely. Um, well, get the reputation known, right? Exactly. Yes, because it's it's hard to be a lawyer in a city with 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 many other lawyers. It's hard to just start out on your own. So it's a very um, saturated field. A lot of uh, you know hungry people out there trying to eat, so to speak. Right. Yes. Exactly. Um. Yeah. So from there, and then I opened up my own firm and. We kind of just did our thing. Um, you know, we took regular cases, whether it be divorces, bankruptcies, you know, business to business contracts, um, everything. Um, you know, we took a, a class action against the state uh, at one point. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and, and ultimately we won the class action. And then, you know, shortly after that is when I took my break after that class action. And, and now I'm here. And then have you found uh, uh, some success in, in your new position? I haven't been in the courtroom too many times yet. Um, however, I, I, I definitely have enjoyed my time within the DOJ. Um, I've met a lot of amazing people um, and continue to meet a lot of amazing people. And it's just overall, it's, uh, you know, at the end of the day, upholding the law and making sure the other citizens are safe and doing my part is, is very rewarding. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, take me on one of your most uh, prolific cases that you've been involved in today. In terms of my time with the DOJ? Or... In terms of uh, what, what speaks to you the most, what resonates to you the most, what you still think about when you wake up in the morning, you're having your breakfast toast, right, a bit of a poached egg, you know, maybe some beans and toast, something like that, right, bangers and mash, and you're thinking about, oh, I'm so happy with that case that happened back here. Yeah, I mean, I'd probably say the the class action back when I was a defense attorney. Um, I'd say that was probably my my favorite case. Um, so um, the government infringed on the citizens' rights and automatically enrolled every member of society as an organ donor um, without the consent of the people or anyone oh, else involved. Yo. Yeah, yeah. A bit of overstep there. A very big overstep. So, you know, I saw that. I personally was unhappy with it. Um, and I started to poll people throughout the state and put out polls left and right to get some feelers to make sure that I wasn't the only one. And, you know, outstanding remarks and found out that obviously there was many people that were um, were upset that they were forced to become organ donors with no way to opt out um, whatsoever. So we went to trial. It was a 
pretty strenuous, lengthy trial. Um, several witnesses attested, um, and ultimately we won the case, and um, it was it was good. A great work to the people of San Andreas there that you've done. All right. So before we run out of time, mate, speak directly to the camera. Speak to the folks at home watching us tonight on 16 Minutes. All right. Tell them what the future holds for Nigel Barrington. I'd say the future for me is just going to be continuing within the Department of Justice. Um, never thought I'd be a prosecutor before, but it's something I've thoroughly enjoyed in my brief time here. Uh, and I, I, I've, I've enjoyed every minute of it. And uh, I continue to, I'll continue to keep doing it and keeping my word and keeping everyone safe and making sure justice is served. Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I, I hope you don't find yourselves on the other side of the courtroom against senior state prosecutor Nigel Barrington here. All right. But if you do so find yourself in that position, I wish you good luck. All right. Absolutely. Mr. Barrington, we appreciate your time here on 16 Minutes tonight. All right, mate. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning in this evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to 16 Minute, a weekly show here at CNT where we'll cover a range of topics, including politics, lifestyle, pop culture, business, health, and science. I am your host, Nigel Worcestershire, and this week we'll head to the Galileo Observatory for a bit of a chat with Senior State Prosecutor Nigel Barrington. Tonight, we'll have a bit of a Nigel on Nigel, as this is 16 Minutes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to 16 Minutes, a weekly show here at CNT. We will cover a range of topics, including politics, lifestyle, pop culture, business, health, and science. I'm your host, Nigel Worcestershire. And oh, yeah. Who? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to 16 Minutes, a weekly show here at CNT. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in tonight, ladies and gentlemen, as State Prosecutor Nigel Barrington plans to continue to prosecute some of the state's most prolific and dangerous criminals. The people of San Andreas can continue to depend on his service. As always, ladies and gentlemen, have a great night and be safe, San Andreas. For CNT, I have been your host, Nigel Worcestershire, and this has been 16 Minutes.